Hello everyone, I am Dr. Mohammad Arshad, Assistant Professor in the Department of Mathematics, Indian Institutes of Technology, Indore. Today we will discuss about statistical inference and statistical decision theory. In statistical inference, we mainly focus on the estimation theory and in decision theory, first we will discuss about the decision rule and their properties. In statistics, we use some terms like sample, population, statistics, and parameter. Population is a totality of aggregate item under a study. For example, if we want to study uh, some characteristics of students in a particular university, then our population is all registered students in the that university a sample is a part of population we use sample to estimate the some information about the population statistics is a function of random sample for example let x1 x2 xn be a random sample from a population then the sample mean defined as x bar equal to 1 by n summation i equal to 1 to n xi and sample variance s square equal to 1 by n minus 1 summation i equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square these two are are basically statistics statistics are pure function of the random sample it does not depends on some unknown quantity a parameter is a statistical constant that describes the entire population. For example, a population average or percentage. Usually the parameter is an unknown quantity. For example, population mean we denoted by mu and population variance we denoted by sigma square and population proportion capital P. These are denote and represent the population quantities. The probability distribution of a statistics is called the sampling distribution. It is a link between the sample and populations. For example, let x1, x2, xn be a random sample from normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. Then the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is also normal with mean mu and variance sigma square by n. Similarly, we can also find any sampling distributions of these statistics. These will help us in defining the some properties of the estimators. In estimation procedure, statistics calculated from random sample are used to estimate the value of population parameters. Such statistics are called estimators. There are two types of estimation procedure, point estimation and interval estimation. In point estimation, we provide a number that represent the value of the unknown parameter. A point estimate is a sample statistic used to estimate a population parameter. For example, 25% of city people are COVID positive based on a random sample. This number 25% is a single number that represent the estimate of the percentage COVID positive people in that city. But in the interval estimate, we consist range of values that means some confidence interval. We provide two numbers and that contains the true value of the parameter with some, with some probability. For example, we say that 95% certain that the interval 20% to 30% contains the true percentage of COVID positive people in the city. This is a just an example of interval estimation. Here we provide 
two numbers one is 20 percent and second is 30 percent in between the true value of the percentage is here with probability 0.95 point estimation there are four properties of a good point estimator unbiasedness efficiency consistency and sufficiency one by one we will discuss these four properties unbiased estimators an estimator is unbiased if the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population parameter of interest for example the sample mean x bar is an unbiased estimator of population mean mu another example sample variance s square which is defined by this one is an unbiased estimator of the population variance and sample proportion defined by y by n is an unbiased estimator of the population proportion p where y denote the number of positive responses in the sample of size n if this mean of the sampling distribution of the estimator is not equal to the population parameter then the estimator is called the biased estimator for example the uncorrected sample variance defined by v square equal to 1 by n summation i equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square is a bias estimator of the population variance that's the main reason we defined the s square as 1 upon n minus 1 summation i equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square which is an unbiased estimator the sample median is an unbiased estimator of the population median when population is normal but in general it is not true the sample median is not an unbiased estimator of the population median when sampling from the non-normal population sometime we are interested to find asymptotic unbiased estimators when our estimator is biased that means if the expected value of the estimator is not equal to the parametric value then we check that if the expected value of the parameter uh, estimator approaches to the par, uh, population parameter as sample size increases it is an asymptotically unbiased estimator for example if we consider uncorrected sample variance like v square equal to 1 by n i equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square we know that this is a bias estimators if we compute the mean of this estimator we get expected value of v square is 1 minus 1 by n sigma square when n approaches to infinity 1 by n approaches to 0 it means that this whole quantity approaches to sigma square as n approaches to infinity that means in the case of the large sample it slowly approaches to the unknown parameter this implies that the v square is an asymptotic unbiased estimator of population variance sigma square efficiency is a matter of dispersion the smaller the standard deviation of a sampling distribution the higher the efficiency large samples have higher efficiency for example if you consider the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample mean which is given by this sigma upon root n this is also called as a standard error okay whenever n increases okay whenever n increases the standard deviation is decreases if you want to compare two estimators we define the relative efficiency 
of two estimators t1 and t2 as the ratio of the variances of two estimator it is a variance of t1 divided by variance of t2 if relative efficiency is less than 1 the estimator t1 is more efficient than t2 if relative efficiency is greater than 1 the estimator t1 is less efficient than t2 if relative efficiency is equal to 1 the estimators t1 and t2 are equally efficient it means that we, uh, a, a estimator having the smaller variance which is more efficient than the other if we have a class of estimator a estimator having the least variance which is a minimum variance unbiased estimator and we also consider the most efficient estimator now we consider the example let x1 x2 xn be a random sample from normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square then the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is also normal with mean mu and variance sigma square divided by n for large sample size n this distribution of the sample median m tilde will be approximately normal with mean mu and variance pi sigma square divided by 2n for estimating the population mean mu if we consider both sample mean and sample median as two estimator of mu then we come we just uh, compare the ratio of the variances of these estimators we turns out to be the 2 by pi which is equal to 0.64 it implies that for the large sample the sample mean is more efficient than the sample median consistency is a property of large sample an estimator tn more precisely a sequence of estimator tn sequence is defined in terms of sample size that means t1 is a first uh, member of the sequence t2 denotes the second member of the uh, sequence t3 defined this third member of the sequence okay is said to be a consistent estimator if it converges to parameter theta in terms of probability it means that as the sample size increases the statistic tn become a better estimator of the population parameter theta for example the sample mean x bar is consistent estimator of the population mean mu similarly the sample variance s square is also a consistent estimator of the population variance sigma square the sufficiency principle promotes a method of data reduction without loss of information any statistics tx defines a form of data reduction or data summary for example sample mean sample median sample variance are statistics that might be used to summarize some key features of the data an estimator based on the sufficient statistics is called sufficient estimators usually we uh, use the st statistics to summarize the data okay if our statistics contain same information about the unknown parameter uh, that contain in the sample okay then we call this is a sufficient otherwise it is not sufficient statistics so sufficiency is an important property for the data reduction 